the blessing of hungering after God and his righteousness. Matthew chapter 5 verse 6 said, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. And the best thing is when you're hungry and you're thirsty, how many know you want to get filled? And that feeling after you're like, ah, like turkey, Thanksgiving. You ever, how many of you like starve yourself all day and then you have that one meal and then after you're like, ah. They're like, you want another slice of pecan pie? You're like, give me a minute. Come on. Because <laughs> you're full. You're, you're filled. And God says, blessed are those that are hungry and thirsty for righteousness. And a lot of times we look at something like that and we're going to automatically think about right living with God, which is very important. But before you have right living with God, you have to understand what righteousness actually means. Because righteousness is not something that you earn or something that you're going to become. When you got born again, you were made the righteousness of God in Jesus Christ. And so that's already been given to you. And now you and I have to work out what's already ours and what has already been given to us. We are the righteousness of God. But we want to live right, too. So we want to produce the fruit of righteousness, which is right living. Somebody say amen to that. Amen. And so Jesus said, blessed are they that hunger and thirst for righteousness. So the first thing you start with is righteousness. You have to understand what righteousness means. And just say this very simple. Say, righteousness means, righteousness means rightness, rightness with God. So righteousness is the rightness of God. And I'm going to talk to you today about areas where God says, this is my rightness in your life. This is your right in your life. And this is something that you're going to have to hunger and thirst for to get this particular manifestation in your life. Somebody say, the rightness of God. Hungry for the rightness of God in every area of life. So let me explain a little further so you can catch up with me here. So if my body is sick then what is the rightness of God in my body? Health. Health is God's rightness. It's my right to be healed physically because he was wounded for my transgressions. He was bruised for my iniquity. The chastisement for my peace was upon him and by his stripes I was healed. So it's my right to be healed. So I have to hunger and thirst for the rightness of God in my body, go after it, and my body will be filled with healing. What about the rightness of God in my finance? Lack. Is that the rightness of God? No. God wants to bring me from lack into prosperity. That's my right. He became poor that me through his poverty might become rich. So it's God's will that all my needs are met. That is the rightness of God. So I have to hunger and thirst for the rightness of God in my finance. And then my pocketbook, my bank account, will be filled with the prosperity of God. How many are believing for a rightness to show up in your money? What about in your family? Maybe the family's broken. The marriage is struggling. The kids are struggling. And how many know the rightness of God will come into your family and restore the marriage. It'll bless the marriage. And it will restore and bless the children. And we can hunger and thirst. For the rightness of God in our family. And watch the rightness of God. Change a crooked family. Into a right family. Amen somebody. The rightness of God also in our soul. Where there's been brokenness and damage. Because of trauma or abuse. Or neglect or reject. And all the scars that have come with it. The rightness of God will show up. And it will heal the past pain that I went through. How many know you have a right to be healed? You have a right to be blessed. You have a right to be whole. You have a right for your family to be blessed. And you have a right to live right for God. Somebody give God praise like you're going to hunger and thirst for righteousness. If you do, the Bible says you're blessed and you will be filled. Number two, hunger for rightness in our soul. So I'm going to go through each of these. Somebody say, rightness in my soul. Now, Psalms 107 verse 9 says, 
He satisfies the longing soul and fills the hungry soul with goodness, with goodness. And Psalms 34, 4 and 6 says, I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. And when I came to the Lord, um, probably like many people in this room, I came at one point even depressed, uh, suicidal. Then I went crazy, flipping mad. Come on, somebody. I lost it. Because when I was little, my father just decided to abandon me and my family. And then my stepdad just abused us every day. And then it just was crazy family lifestyle. When you go through life like that, it jacks you up on the inside. It messes with you, your psyche. You become those injuries your soul gets hit by. It doesn't just affect you then. It leaves scars. Those scars, if not, they're not dealt with, become a mentality. And all of a sudden, you live life through the, ven, the, through the, through the, through the lens of pain and abuse. Which brings what? Limitation, insecurity, intimidation, trust issues. So you live your whole life. I went through it. I forgave them. But the, the, the consequences of what was done to me scarred me for life. There's no healing for it. So you live your life with this big limitation. Even though God has greatness and big things, you can never break into it. Because of the limitation from the pain of the past. And when you seek the rightness of God in your soul. And you begin to go after the word of God. And the presence of God. And the power of God. He begins to not only heal you of the wounds of your past. But he begins to lift the lids that the scars left in your mind. How many thank God we can live a life without limit. That is the rightness of God. And that's kind of like what happened to Israel. Remember? They were, they were in bondage for not 100 years, not 200 years, not 300, 400 years they were slaves to the Egyptian taskmasters. These taskmasters were highly developed in the art of manipulation and abuse. So these taskmasters would abuse the parents, the grandparents, the great-grandparents, and the great-great-great-kids. So you had so much generation of just messed upness. Then they get free. Pharaoh's dead. Pharaoh's buried. So are the taskmasters. They're all dead. And God says, now get up and go take that prosperity and take that promised land. That's your rightness. That's your right. And you know what they told God? We can't do it. We're not able. We don't have what it takes. And it's like, who told you you couldn't do it? God just told you you have what it takes. God just told you you're able. But because of the pain of their past, it put a limit on them and they couldn't possess God's promise. But how many know when you hunger and thirst for the rightness of God in your soul, God doesn't just heal you. He breaks the spirit of intimidation and fear off your life. So you can, like the Bible said, run through truths, leap over walls, and possess the promise he's, come on, he's given to you. Somebody give God a praise like you're going to step into this in your life. I sought the Lord, and he heard me, and he delivered me from all my fears. And so when I first got saved, I was like insatiable. I went after God because, man, I got these areas in my soul that just, that just like a lid in my life. And it's a brokenness in my life. And then I love this scripture. It says, this poor man cried out. And the Lord heard him. And the Lord saved him out of all of his troubles. Look, think about that. Think about that. You know, rich people normally don't give poor people time. Because a rich person knows my time is my money. They say Bill Gates is worth $10,000 a minute. $10,000 a minute. So, so if you want to spend 60 minutes with Bill Gates, do the math. It's not cheap. You're going to come out about a half a million short. Come on, somebody. <laughs> There's 60 seconds in a minute. Are you with me now? That's a lot, right? So if a poor guy comes up and says, well, I want, I want an hour of your time, Mr. Gates. Mr. Gates says, no problem. Here's a, here's a $600,000 bill. You can get an hour of my time. Right? Here, here you go. Here, Mark, Mark Walt, whatever his name is, Facebook guy. Here, 
I'm worth seven million, uh, uh, whatever, uh, uh, a minute. This is my bill. For, you want an hour with me? This is what you get. Poor men don't get time with rich men. And the Bible says that David said, this poor man cried to the richest God in the universe. And he didn't say, I don't have time. He said, he heard me. And he didn't just hear me. He took time to deliver me from all my problems. Wow. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst. Number, num- number three, hunger for rightness in our families and with a long, blessed life. How many want your family blessed? I, I mean, there was a time in my life where I never thought or dreamed that I could actually have a family. Like, I never, I never knew. I, I mean, I got trained by Easy e Snoop Dogg and Dr. Dre, Spice One, and Too Short. Beastie Boys and Red Hot Chili Peppers. Throw a little Pink Floyd in there and Led Zeppelin. ACDC, let's go. Those were my mentors. They don't talk about fidelity and marriage. No, they don't talk about that. It's the opposite. It's like throw it in the gutter and go buy another. Come on. Spice One, are you hearing me? Right? So these, so I didn't, I, and then my models didn't say that, and my examples didn't say that. So I never even thought you can have one person and then a family like, what? What is all this? I never had it modeled. I didn't believe, I didn't even believe in it. Like you can't, but yet how many know God, when you hunger and thirst for rightness, he can change your thinking and b- build your faith. He realized this is what God has and I can have what God said I have. How many want to hunger and thirst and watch God fill you with this? Because if God can fill you with it, he can get it over to you. You with me? That's all good. Deuteronomy 30, 19 and 20 said, I have set before you uh, life and death, blessing and cursing. Then he says, choose life. Tell your neighbor, choose life. (laughs) Then he says, if you do, both you and... And your, who, who, you and your, may what, may live, may live. Now, how many know everyone's living? So he's not talking about life. He's talking about the nature of life. He says, your children are going to live for me. They're going to have that abundant life. So right now, if your children are not living for God, right there is your promise that if they're not living for God, I claim that they are living for God. They are right with God. How many believe your children are right with God? Verse 20, that you may love the Lord your God, that you may obey his voice, and that you may, here it is, seek hunger, thirst, cling to him. For for he is your, yeah, and the length of your that you may dwell in the land which the Lord promised. So right there, God says, I'm going to bless your family, your children. I'm going to bless your spouse. And not only that, I'm going to give you a long, happy life. That's what God says about you. Some say, well, pastor, I know this one Christian and they died young. That's between them and God. That has nothing to do with you. This is what God says to you. What do you believe? I don't base my life on somebody else's experience. I don't base my life on somebody else's victory or success or failure. I base my life on what God told me. And God told me, your kids are going to be right and you're going to live a long time. That's my right. And you got to hunger for that. You got to thirst for that. And God says, you'll be filled with that. For number four, hungering for the rightness of God in our bodies, in our bodies. Psalms 103, 2 and 3 says, bless the Lord. Read it with me. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is, bless his holy name. Verse 2. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his, say that, benefits. Come on, say it three times. Benefits. French benefits. Come on. Say benefits. Tell your neighbor, I got rights. Tell him, I got benefits. Now look at me, look at me, watch me. Who forgives all your, and heals some of your diseases. 
All of them but the coronavirus. Listen, if the corona and lemon couldn't kill you, this virus ain't going to take you out. Are you hearing me? Some of you drank 37 Corona and drove on the freeway and somehow you got home. You came outside, you look at the car, you don't even know how it got on the lawn. Come on. You know, when you're in trouble, you go out there and the car ain't there. Then you go, oh, wow. Hopefully it was an Uber driver. Okay, now watch. Say, I got benefits, man. I got benefits. So say you bought a car, a nice car. New, new Cadillac, one of them nice Cadillacs. And a nice Cadillac, you buy yourself a Cadillac. You did a, you did a, you did a, you did a, a nice Cadillac, you got a good payment, like 500 a month. You're happy with your Cadillac. You're rolling. Eh. Come on, bumping your Kanye West. Eh. <laughs> Cadillac's cool, you can do one finger now. Whoa. <laughs> Put your seat back. Eh. And you're rolling down to 605. About to jump on the five, and all of a sudden, your red light comes on. Bam! And it starts smoking. Whew, and then, boom, you got to pull over. Man down. Man, you call up the thing. Man, what's up with this Cadillac, man? They come. They tow it. And all of a sudden, you go to the dealer, and you're like, hey, look it. I just bought this car, but right here, it says I have a five-year warranty. It's one year. And it says bumper to bumper. That means that, that, that tow truck guy, he, he's covered. Uh, his dog he had in there, that chihuahua, is covered. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> the storage is covered, um, and my engine is covered, and you better give me a car while you're fixing it, because that's right there, too. That's my right. I got a benefit. And then the tailor tells you, yes, I understand that, but I just feel that's not fair. I feel like we'll, pay, we'll cover 20% of it, and you'll pay for your own driver, and that's what we're going to do. And you, we're not going to give you any car. Uh, I know that's your benefit, and I know that's your right, but uh, uh, that's what we're going to do. What, what are you going to do? Like, oh, okay, okay, uh, yeah, I'll pay $5,000. How many of you are going to be like, what? <laughs> and some of you will lose your joy right there and be like, don't make me get back there, girl, and choke you out because I... I see some of you, you know what I mean? You're like, you say, but barely, you know what I mean? We're working on you. Some of you got them big nails, you know what I mean? Like, wah! <laughs> These ain't just for looks. These are for choking fools. Now listen to me. <laughs> Come on. How many of you ain't going to settle for that? Why? Because you got benefits. You got rights. You got a hunger for your right to be healed. You got a hunger for your right to be whole. Y'all are clapping here like by his stripe. You were healed. He heals all your diseases. You could just sit there and take it. Like you would take, you know, pay for your own engine. Or you could step up and say, no, get your claws out to the devil. <laughs> and say, I don't think so because I'm blessed and favored and I'm hungry and thirsty for my rightness in my body. Woo! Say it. I am healed. Sometimes you got to claim healing with muckles in your nose. Come on, cough it. <laughs> I'm healed. I don't care what you say. All up in the doctor's office, they're giving you all these reports. No, 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 no. You're like, praise the Lord, brother. I'm healed. I believe it. I receive it. My body's whole. Now, now you got to take care of your body now. Don't be dumb. Go out and play in the cold and eating Twinkies all day. Talk about I'm healed. <laughs> big old soda. Some of you got that big old tumbler on, 32 ounces, drinking soda like it's water. I'm healed. No, man, you got you to be smart. And the church said, amen. All right, number five. I got to roll on. I got five minutes for five minutes for five points. All right. That's why I put number five twice. <laughs> I just doubled up. Right now, watch this. Say hunger for rightness in our finances. How many of you have a right to be blessed financially? 
Thank God for three of you. And a half a clap. There you go. Got a right. You got to fight for your right. Psalms 34.10. Let's read. The lions lack and suffer hunger. But those who, mm, who seek, who go after, who cling, who are consumed, those who seek the Lord shall not lack any good thing. Anybody hungry and thirsty for the rightness of God in your finances? You can't just sit back and order whatever God's will, whatever. No, you got to fight for your right to prosper. Second Kings 18 said, for he clung to the Lord. Put your name there. For Jason. What? I was reading with Joshi last night. We were reading the book and it's like, I said, put my name there. Just put Joshi and Jason. Are buffed. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> for he say, for he clung. Jason. No, you don't want to put your name there? Fine. I'm not, I'm not gonna curse you. I mean, I'm gonna bless you right here. For he, Jason, clung to the Lord. Jason did not turn away from faithfully following him. But Jason kept his commandments, which the Lord commanded Moses. Verse 7. And the Lord was with Jason. And he was a successful and prosperous man wherever he went. That's me. Wherever I go. I, I felt God tell me in 20, in, in the next season of my ministry, in my life, and the next season of Freedom Center, and in my own life, and in our global ministry, I felt God say, money's going to become like water. <laughs> yeah, three claps. Look at you haters. You got no faith. You ain't got no faith. Is it my money? It ain't your money. Now stop being a hater, Judas. Now sit down. I'm preaching. Poverty spirit. I come to break that thing. Okay. All right. Let's go. But I, look, every, every one of these promises of rightness in your life, the righteousness of God, they, they all come with conditions. You can't just do whatever. You got to, this is God says, do this, obey his voice. Okay. And, and this is a heavy scripture I'm going to give you because it's going to, this is heavy. I'm gonna, this is heavy. This is heavy. This is heavy. You ready? Yeah. Now this right here, if you get this right, I'm a teacher. This is heavy. If you get this, you're going to break out financially. But you got to get this. You don't want this. Yeah. Whatever. Deuteronomy 8.10 said it this way. When you have eaten and are what? Now look at me. That's dangerous because blessed are the hungry. When you eat and you're full, are you hungry? No longer hungry because your needs are met now. This is a dangerous place to be in life if you don't know what you're doing. Blessed are, he said, when you have eaten and are full and have built what? You built what? So God says, I'm going to give you beautiful Houses. <laughs> Something like, Pastor, I'm trying to get a beautiful apartment. Well, that's start with your house. That's your house. <laughs> Fix up your apartment. Make it beautiful. Burn a candle. Do something. Go to Target or something. All right. Beautiful houses and you dwell in them. Say, I received that. <laughs> Verse 13, 13. When your herds and your flocks, what? All right. And your silver and your gold are? Multiplied. All right. And all that you have is? Multiplied. All right. Verse 14. When you're, uh, this is, here it is. Your heart is lifted up and you forget the Lord your God who brought you from the house of bondage. Paraphrase. Who led you through a season of scarcity. Verse 16. Who fed you in the wilderness with manna, which your fathers did not know, that he might humble you and that he might test you to do you good in the end. Then you say in your heart, my power and the might of my hand have gained me this wealth. No, my friend, you shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you power to get wealth. Now listen, listen, and I quote, don't just get hungry Stay hungry, even 
after God blesses you. You see, the hunger to get you there, you'll still need it in order to keep you there. This is the lesson that I've learned over 27 years. When I came to God, I was like a basket case. I couldn't read. I couldn't write. I was a basket case. You should... I probably should have been locked up in a hospital. But that, that, that's my reality. I feel like I've lived two lives. I feel like one was taken and another has lived. I don't, I, I, I don't even, I, I, don't, I just, it's like a miracle. Really. And, and I guess the greatest gift I can give you as a pastor would be this gift. Not money. Hunger. Hunger. Because that was the thing that changed my life. And I realized it's a gift. When I walked through those doors of Christianity, it came on me, man. A hunger to get my mind right. A hunger to change my life. And then as I began to go to church, I began to realize these were my rights to be healed. These were my rights to be normal. I remember being in church and realizing it was my right to be married. It was, and then I learned later it was my right to have children. I didn't believe in any of that. And God put this thing on me called hunger. It made me like a weirdo. I forgot about everything. I left all other lovers. I left everything in the dust. And I never looked back. And I ran for the one who rescued me. And I ran hard, and I ran heavy, and 27 years later, I'm still hungry. I'm still thirsty. This is the greatest gift I can give you. I got my son here. This is the greatest gift I can give you, Josh. Not money, not, 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 this is it. Because when God found me, please stand up. We're going to wrap it up. When God found me, I was a poor man. I, I couldn't read. I couldn't write. I couldn't talk. I was desperate, man. I was hungry. And now, I'm pastor of a, a mega, mega church. Mega. I think it was like 2,835 people just in family groups this week. I'm in charge of Lifestyle of Freedom, Bible College, School of Ministry, School of Business. I run all these. This is all, I'm, on, I'm the boss. I have a global ministry. I got a call this week. You'll see it. We'll be on television. My story. And it'll be available in almost every home in America and all over the world. Global influence. It's big time. But I learned, man, that, and I learned it and I've seen people fail here. They get blessed, you know. They get their families better. They get their kids. They get some money. They get healed. They get happy. And they begin to back away because their, their goal was those things. But those are just benefit packages. The greatest gift that God can give you is not just hunger for a better life, but it's hunger for Him. And I'm going to give you a scripture that to me is like inheritance scripture. I use this scripture to fight the devil with. When he tells me, because I pray and he tells me, this is what he tells me. He tells me, you're stupid and you're wasting your time. You could be doing a lot of things when you're here praying. And I, tell, I use this scripture to tell the devil, get out of here. And he does, because it's one thing he doesn't like to fight. He'll fight me, but he won't fight the word. He hates the word. 
because he exposes his lies. And he says, without faith, it's impossible to please him. How many want to please him? I do. I do. I do. I want to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is. I believe you are. And he also must believe that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. And I learned the greatest hunger and thirst is the rightness in my relationship with God. You see, for a long time, God had me like, call like a desert life. For like five years, I lived in like a, like a little shack. And when I bought this nice house on the top of the hill, you know what I told the builders? I said, hey, uh, build me a shack in the back. That's where I want to be every day. And I want to pray there because I never want to forget where I came from. And I want to stay hungry and thirsty like I was when I had nothing. I'm trying to teach somebody how to be blessed in the house. I'm trying to show somebody how it's done. So, what I love about hunger, I learned this. You don't have to be the smartest. You don't have to have it all together. You could come from brokenness. But if you have hunger, it's like fills in all the holes. And that's why he said, blessed are the hungry, for they shall be filled. And if God gave you hunger, feed it. Feed it. And get hungrier. And the more he gives you, and the more blessed you become, don't get less hungry. Stacy, get more hungry. And God is going to bless you more and more, you and your children. But the greatest blessing you could ever give anybody in your life that you love is the blessing of hungering and thirsting after God himself. Come on, act like he is a rewarder. There's a song I sing and I like, love it. It reminds me of this. It's, no, there goes, there is none like you. And I can search for all eternity long. I pray today you get impartation. Some of you, maybe you feel like, I don't know, inadequate. You don't measure up to what people expect you to be. Hunger will make up for your weaknesses. Hunger will make up for your inability. Hunger will make up for your insecurity. Hunger will make up for your lack of gifting. Hunger. Hunger, are you hungry? That's why God told Abraham, and I got to close. He told Abraham, which is like a hero of mine. When I get to heaven, he's one of the guys I want to I wanna hang with him. I want to hang with David. I love David. And I want to I wanna hang out with Paul. And then, of course, Jesus. God told Abraham Abraham you know he had a rough start he's like a witch he was into witchcraft and stuff and God called him blessed him he said he said Abraham don't be afraid man and he basically tells him look up to the stars he goes like that he's like, that's how many kids I'm going to give you and that's how much I'm going to bless you 
And he said, look at the sand. He picked it up. See all those sand, little sand pieces? That's how much I'm going to bless you for every sand. He says, look at your wife. She's all messed up. She's like, don't worry. I'm going to make it right. Come on. <laughs> and, he's like, and God's like, look at yourself. And he's like, man, I'm old and all messed up. He's like, no, no, no. I'm going to make you right. I'm going to bless your family and bless your life. But then he, he said something to him. That this whole series is based on this statement. He said, Abraham, but remember, I'm your shield. And this is heavy. I'm your exceeding great reward God says I'm your reward I'm going to bless your family I'm going to bless your children I'm going to give you a long life I'm going to give you prosperity, wealth and riches I'm going to give you joy and happiness that you've never had I'm going to remove fear from your life but the greatest thing I'm going to do for you is I'm going to give you my presence and I'm going to give you me and I pray to God I pray to God that you get a hold of that impartation today would you lift your hands to heaven and just worship him and as the worship team sings this song over you reconnect with God as we have to Thank you for watching Freedom. Don't forget to follow us on all of our social media platforms, subscribe to us on YouTube, and take Freedom on the go by downloading our SoundCloud app today. Once again, thank you for tuning in.